Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the It's Just Dinner podcast. I'm your host, Tom Robinson, and sitting right across from me in a suit and tie, yes, you well, guys, you trying, wouldn't believe it. Is we're trying to class up the, Bob this show Walls, bit, welcome. You know, we, need, we need to be a little bit better dressed, I'm Man, afraid, you look sharp today. You're well, making, this, you're making you me know. and Sophia feel bad here. Well, that's, that was my goal, so, <laughs> so apparently it worked. <laughs> and Good for me. Yeah, you look great. And right next to you, Bob, in the control booth yes. is our assistant... Sophia. Sophia, glad I'm to back. see you. Thanks good to be for back. being here. It's good to have yeah, you. It is. A um, little underdressed, but you look I great. Know, I know, I you know. No one, no one gave me a memo, so, so yeah. I think it's we not We all my feel fault. a little underdressed today. Well, That's sorry true. that I'm making you feel that well, way, but that was what I planned to do. So, Bob, I'm really excited about our guest today. Yes, we have a guest we calling do, in. And he is coming in from North Philadelphia. Yes which is pretty exciting, all the way across the country. Amazing the technology and we have today, so, isn't it? Yes. Who would have known? And we actually, if you go on YouTube, you'll see Landon here. So mm -hmm. our guest is Landon Swain. <laughs> Landon, welcome. Glad to have you. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. And all the way from uh, North Philadelphia. All the yeah. way from the, other, <laughs> from the East Coast. Bob, let me tell you, Landon is the author of two books. Uh-huh. And one is the Detox Christian Dating, right. which we'll talk a lot about, and I want him to get in more details about that. And then a brand new book called Charming Beautiful People, which I want him to tell us about right. as well. Yeah. But he's also oh, wow. a content right. creator. You, he's a speaker, right? Uh -huh. You do speaking engagements. I do. <laughs> yeah, and he, <laughs> he says he's a playwright and a lyricist, so wow. I'm interested in that too. Wow. And I'm going to tell you, he's all over social media. Wow. So he's cool. on all the major social media sites. Cool. So welcome, Landon Swain. How are you? I'm doing good. I, I'm, I'm impressed. You know about charming, beautiful people. I like just got a just announced that too. So I that's, found. That's, yeah, I saw it was just had come out. So I wanted to give it a push so that <laughs> everybody. What is it? What is it about? Maybe we'll start there, and you can tell us about that. Yeah. So it kind of comes out of the Christian dating in and of itself. Uh, I found. Some people will take Proverbs 3130, which is charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised, and will take that and will go a weird route with it where they will make it seem as though physical attraction is somehow like anti biblical, uh, and even that like people that are physically attractive by whatever cultural standard you have can't also like it's like they're shallow. And so, like, their uh -huh. love of the Lord is, like, a little bit less than than those who are, like, roughing it by not being up to, like, cultural norms of beauty. So it kind of just is a biblical case for for beauty, and it, it kind of takes through several different passages of Scripture and goes through, like, hey, like, the Bible's not anti-physical beauty. <laughs> it just mm -hmm. is very clear that it's not the most important thing. So, like, That's awesome. I don't have to, like, I don't have to be looking for, like, you know, a person I'm not attracted to, like, I think they, they can coexist, <laughs> yeah. but they can love the Lord and that's also attract That's, great. <laughs> that, that's an interesting <laughs> philosophy. I well, not one that I want to espouse because it would make people think, well, he must not be very I was good gonna, I was going to say, Landon, you <laughs> be rest assured, Bob is not shallow. Well, yeah, well, I, I, I am very shallow, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to get on that bandwagon because what you're saying is being good looking is not important. Yeah. And, and so, <laughs> you, you know, you got, a, you got a good thing going there. The, the, well, there's, there's really no, re there's no way that you can get around that because you're either saying you're ugly or I'm ugly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a that's a no win situation. Uh, so, what a yeah. what a great topic and using and using the Bible to do it. Well, yeah. that's you know uh, you're, yeah. you're you're not only going to be culturally offending people, you're probably also going to go to hell too for, <laughs> <laughs> for doing that. So well, that's that's good to know. And it, well, later we'll talk about where we can find that book. But what I want to talk to you about, Landon, is your other book, your big seller. Is it a bestseller? <laughs> Yes, but I feel manipulative saying that Amazon's pretty easy to manipulate. Ah, the so bestseller on Amazon. Yes. Hey, is, take what you can get. You it know. is Detox <laughs> Christian Dating. Mm -hmm. And Detox Christian Dating yeah, is the title of, it, of the book. And I, Bob, I have to tell you, everything that I read about Landon and I read about this book is exactly what we talk really? about on the It's Just Dinner podcast. So what you're telling me, he's very smart. He's and a cool smart and guy. Yeah, well, and I'm... He, he agrees uh, with us. Uh, yes. so, so what I found interesting is that, and there's a quote on his website that said, he was moved into compassionate act action after seeing the over-complexity of Christian dating culture. Yeah. Does that sound familiar? Well, uh, yeah. 
Wow. Uh, Landon, just so you know, that's why Bob and I are sitting here too, because yeah. we saw the dysfunctional nature and the problems with the dating culture here. Mm-hmm. And uh, just so you know, we think we have the answer. Right. And that's what the, that's where <laughs> it's just dinner is all about. Right. But we've, that's where we started our whole mm-hmm. thing. So tell us a little bit about where this idea for this book came from. Yeah. So I, um, am from Virginia and actually I'm from the town that Liberty University is. Uh, and so that's oh. where I also went to college. Um, mm-hmm. and so Liberty is the world's largest Christian university. Right. Love it there. But while I was there, I worked for the student activities department and we would do this uh, yearly event called Coffee House. It's like a giant variety show thing. And I was the host. And so we decided to do one that was themed after late night television shows. And Uh so like think like Jay Leno, Conan, all that stuff. And so we wanted to do kind of a John Oliver week, um, last week tonight's kind of segment where we kind of pick a random thing, research it a lot and then make fun of it in order to prove a larger <laughs> point. Uh, and so it was like, okay, the dining hall is cut off limits because somebody will get mad, but dating <laughs> is just free reign. Oh, yeah. So, there you go. There you go. Everybody doesn't anyhow. like dating. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I had already had like plenty of conversations about the dating culture up until that point because it was just really interesting, the things that I would hear and the weird things that people would like have as motivations and all these different things. So I started to do some more research on it. I put out a couple surveys to got, get people's general feels. And then... I was just bombarded with a bunch of stories about just things that I could not believe, like how bad it was. I knew it was, but I like, I just could not believe some of the stories I was reading. And then I was like, okay, is this just a Liberty problem? So then no, I reached out to No, some it's friends, not. <laughs> <laughs> as I quickly realized. Uh, so I reached out to some friends at multiple different colleges uh, across the U.S. and mm. reached out to them and they said same thing. Uh, multiple different denominations, same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, even talked to my dad about it, and he said some of the same stuff that you're dealing with, I was dealing with back in my day. So this was a multi-generational, multi-denominational, multi-regional problem that mm-hmm. largely hadn't been addressed. It's been addressed in part with a lot of like kind of how-to date, but right. my book is more talking about the things that make that stuff really complicated, such mm-hmm. as like, the things that people say and maybe some of the motivations, not just like, oh, you date for marriage. Like mm-hmm. that's just, that, that's in every dating book that there is, but right. not a lot of like the ins and outs of like the actual um, minutia of the culture. Hmm. Interesting. And, and how long ago did you publish this book? How long has it been on Amazon? Uh, I want to say it's la- not this previous October, but the one before that, I think it, so it's been out, out about a year and a half or so. Right, interesting. Um, what, what kind of feedback so are you getting from your re- readers? Have not received any death threats yet. So. Oh, well, there, there you go. <laughs> you, you're ahead of most other authors so, so far. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm waiting for the day, but I, uh, I mostly people are resonating with it, um, mm-hmm. which is I hate that. I, this sounds like really cocky. It makes sense. Like that was kind of the point. So I was like, I know this will resonate with people because people have been so frustrated for so long by oh, yes. the things that people tell them. People are frustrated by weird cultural pressures uh, that like maybe have some biblical backing, but have been taken and kind of distorted to just a, a unhealthy degree. And so I, I knew that this would just kind of like, it would it would match up with people's experiences a lot so i've received largely positive feedback Mm -hmm. interesting you know we we find that same thing that a lot of the information that people get about dating in the general popular culture is wrong so there's a lot of people Mm -hmm. who promote physical relations before marriage and what we find is what that does is it causes people to develop uh, feelings of love for each other before they've determined compatibility and it, it just translates into dysfunctional marriages because yeah. it's easy to fall in love with someone because of the physical nature of it, especially if you get into physical relations. But it's very difficult to identify somebody that you're compatible with that you can spend the next 40 years with going through the troubles of life. Right. And, and so that's one of the other things that we have seen is that there's so much disinformation when it comes to dating and relationships. In that pop it's, culture. In popular culture yeah. that it's confusing. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but, we. I was finding that a lot of people's motivations were a mix of biblical motivations and a mix of like cultural 
yeah. like yeah. regular entertainment was kind of infused with that. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. not all bad. Like not no. everything that culture puts out there is like off the mark with it. Hallmark but Christmas what, movies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a lot of it like has, it has a sliver of truth, but then people take it and kind of blow it out of proportion. Right. And that's when right. it gets really ruckus. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, Bob, I will tell you this, that I think one of the things Landon believes that will fix all this, and you say this over and over and over again, is conversation. Right, right. And I, you know, you say it all the time, that mm-hmm. that's really the key to all this, right? Right. Be- being able to sit down and, and truly communicate with another human being is becoming a lost art. Y- you know, and I think because of technology, we just don't do it as much as we used to do it. And so I think people have a difficulty and a fear sometimes of sitting down at a table and having a, an eye-to-eye conversation right. with someone because they're afraid to expose themselves, they're vulnerable or whatever reasons. And it really, when you're looking at relationship development, there's nothing more important than conversation. Right. What did I, you find out about conversation? Really, it is when people are actually aware of how things are received, like how an expression like, God told me that we should break up. How that's actually received <laughs> by the people. Wow, that's, receiving. you know, that's... Uh, so same. hang on, hang on, Landon, hang on, hang on, Landon. Sophia, have you heard that mm. before? <laughs> not, not to me, specifically. So, so he, he came down from Sinai with the tablets that said, <laughs> break up. told Sophia... But to I have it. heard of that happening, okay. and it's been, yeah. yeah, like it has happened, and I think, I, I'm interested to see what you have to say about, yeah. about what you found out about that. <laughs> well, it was like, it, it, the way that a lot of people take it is, dang, I must suck. And God, <laughs> must, suck God must hate me. <laughs> yeah, like, like there's not a whole lot of it. Like, well, like, it, it, what do you, how do you, how do you respond to that? I mean, exactly. God told me we should break up. You're like, well, I don't I have no idea how to respond to that one. <laughs> did he mention what I should do? You know? <laughs> yeah, that's like, did he it's say like, he liked my me, hair? Or, you know. Yeah, it's like, he told me the exact opposite. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but I've well, a lot and, of people. And, and oh, we, do find, we do find that on the opposite scale where we have people say, God told me to marry you. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's probably yeah. more frightening. Yeah. You know? yeah, and it's the amount of people that I think that it, it kind of signals an ir- irreverence for the Lord in yes, that people are so reckless so. to say so. Because there's a lot of people, uh, when I was talking with people about it, I, I, I met a girl, she said, like, no, I heard, like, God say, God told me that, like, this should not happen or whatever, like, this relationship yeah. today. And I asked her, I was like, what What did that look like? What did God sound like? And she said, <laughs> she instantly went to, well, it was more like a feeling. And it's like, okay, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not I'm not anti-feelings. I think that God can definitely communicate the feelings. <laughs> I think the feelings are important for, like, reading situations. However, sure. you are putting, like, a very definite thing onto something that is extremely subjective. Oh, yes. And, and it's like, what is your understanding of what God, because then it basically becomes your heart is your God. It essentially right. is whatever I think is God's word. <laughs> and it's right. that's just extremely dangerous. But talk about and taking so, God's name in vain, you know, yeah. by inserting it into your will. <laughs> you know, and what it does is it, it removes you from taking any responsibility. Right. There you go. See, what you're really saying is, I want to break up with you. And I'm so gonna blame it saying, on God. <laughs> blame it on God. Well, you know, I'm really a good guy, but God, he doesn't like you. <laughs> yeah, I found I just have found that there there are a few people that I know and trust that have vocalized to me that like I have heard a physical voice, like a unshakable. I am convinced it was a verbal voice from God, and so mm-hmm. I think that even when somebody says that, I, I don't want to like not trust their judgment right. on that. Yeah, we. You know, but I think that in those situations it's probably still best and it's still being honest for you to then take personal responsibility and still right. say, I feel as though this relationship is not supposed to continue. Not, oh, I'm just going to shift all the blame onto God and then you can't touch whatever <laughs> I said because, you, you know, I God said it. Now, Landon, I don't know if it's going to make you feel any better, but way across the country in Utah, we have the exact same problem. Right. The exact <laughs> same thing exists. So, it, I and I and I think you're right. This is a nationwide problem. Mm-hmm. I think that yeah. this idea of trying to get, <laughs> trying to use a scapegoat, if you will, right. uh, are trying to get out of these relationships because they don't know how to date right. them. 
I think even yeah. for non-Christians, like I just watched Hitch for the first time a couple of weeks ago. I don't know how yeah. I never gotten around to that. Where you been? But Where I, you been? I know, I know, I've been busy. But I think like he was talking about in the beginning how if she says that she just is really busy with work and that's why she can't have a relationship, then you're just not the right guy. Right. And I feel like uh, that's pretty much there. Like God told me, no, it's like, well, my job. And it's like, that's <laughs> totally legitimate. Obviously God is legitimate, but like a job is legitimate too. But like there are things where if it's the right thing, then like you wouldn't say that, right. like you wouldn't. And yeah. so I think it's, it's a problem, well, it's but like, I can see it. Being it's like transitive. Landon said, it's like you cut off your personal responsibility. Right. Exactly. That, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Landon, yeah, you, I, you also go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just going to say kind of going off what she said. Even the amount of people that I know aren't Christians that have still said, God told me to leave. <laughs> like, like, so you, you suddenly believe in this. That's, you're actually that's, that's safer. To, going on here. You're safer because if you don't believe in God, he can't hold you accountable for taking his name in vain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, you talked about the word toxic a lot, and it's a word that I think gets thrown around a lot. What did you mean, or what did you find out about toxicity? Yeah, I used it as more of a, that's mainly addressing how people would refer to it often in the surveys and the casual conversation. Uh, I'm not necessarily calling it toxic. It is more of a response to what other people described it as. And, and I mainly you, in just, your survey, right? You, people were saying dating is yeah. toxic. Yeah. And we hear that a lot here. Yeah. As well. mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So it, it was, and I think that a lot of people mean a lot of different things by that. But the way I t- took it as is there's, unnecessary things within the culture that is making it difficult for, to get to the desired location. So people who are 25 to 30 in our culture just become very panicked. Yeah. You know, and, and if, jump you, in. if you turn 30 and you're not married, you, you know, you're that people consider themselves a failure. And, and mm-hmm. so that, that's one of the other things that we're trying to turn around is that perception that if you're not married, that somehow you have failed God or right. failed society or failed the church. Uh, do you see that also in the larger Christian community? And for us, the, the age time, it's about 25, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think that's changing a lot. Well, not a lot, but a little bit. I right. think uh, maybe like a little bit older, but around that time is probably and, like... And how old are you? Oh, I'm she's, 21. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so I... I yeah, yeah. She's got time. She's got time. Yeah. 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 Don't, but, the, yeah. but yeah, but that is definitely a thing. Um, I, I write about it in the book. Uh, one of my chapters is called Under Pressure, and it just talks about different pressures uh, that people right. within Christian communities feel. And one of them was the median age of marriage statistic getting thrown around. Uh, because uh, over... Since the 1970s, the median age of marriage has risen by six years for both men and women, ah, comparatively hey. now to then, uh, which is a lot. Like that, and there's yeah. a lot going on there. And the reason that a lot of pastors bring that up, typically, is because like they're pointing out that like there's a lot of issues that are like preventing people from getting married, and those are all relevant. Right. But the mm-hmm. way that they always cast the median age of marriage, like getting married later in life, is always cast in a negative light. Right. That is then taken by the people that aren't married that are those ages that are like I'm behind yeah. or something's wrong with me mm-hmm. that makes it so that I didn't I didn't like I should be countering the statistic not contributing to it. Uh, right. And so it, it's a it's a simple if you just put the little caveat at the end there, if you just say, hey, we're not trying to shame people for, <laughs> who aren't married at this point. Mm-hmm. But we just want to acknowledge the fact that like it's a reality that people are getting married later in life. Right. And we just want to get to the bottom of those. Like if people, if people just said that, it would solve a lot of issues. Mm-hmm. But because they don't, people feel a whole lot of shame for not being married by what is considered the cultural expectation mm-hmm. age. And, and I love your emphasis on discipleship when it comes to that, because if you're truly turning your life over to Christ, you don't really need to worry about expectations. Be, be, because being a disciple of Christ is the most important thing you're going to do in your life, and he's going to see you through, whether you're married, not married, divorced, single— right you know what what it doesn't matter so i love that emphasis on discipleship i think that's a really solution to that problem thank you yeah and it, it really like i i i just have such like a heart for hearing people the amount of people that have been hurt by not having conversations about things like yeah. like i recently i i i was the best man in a wedding at the beginning of March. And then I officiated a wedding at the end of March. And the <laughs> couple that was at the wedding at the beginning of March was at that second wedding. So like, it's my best friend. So I asked him about like, you know, marriage and was like, Hey, like, like not trying to be grotesque, but just like, <laughs> Hey, 
how was your honeymoon? Like not trying mm-hmm. to be weird about it at all. Cause I've just heard through this book that heard so many stories about people's like horror experiences. And he was like, Oh dude, like there was so much stuff I did not know. <laughs> and, it was, and in my mind, I'm like, what, like what, why do mm-hmm. people not know? Why is yeah. it such a taboo mm-hmm. topic for us to be able to not have conversations? If we right. need to have conversations about like how it is fine if you are not married by the time you're 30. And right. even if you get married, you're not promised that you're going to be able to have kids. So like, mm-hmm. right. Because like a lot of people, they, they struggle with fertility and that's not a shame no, it's not. based thing. Like we shouldn't be shaming them for it. Right. And it's just a lot of things that we need to be talking about more because I think that that brings it to the light and shame just can't exist within the light. Right. Largely. You know, and I, I, the one thing that I would add to all that is that it's amazing how if you turn yourself over to serving others, then it seems like everything in, else in your life seems to fall in place. And mm-hmm. at, at some point, you're going to meet the right person to go out to dinner, and then you might meet the right person to date. But turning yourself over to service and turning your, into the, the service of others seems to make everything else just kind of fall into place for you. Right. I like what Some you said about say, discipleship too. Oh, sorry, you continue. Oh, I was gonna make a bad pun about <laughs> it's just dinner and yeah. Oh, was, uh, no, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, we're really big on. No, 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 we're big on puns. <laughs> we've got to get back and, and get that pun in here on the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Will you try it, to put it, it back just, in? If it comes up, if someone's mentioned okay. dinner, I'll, I'll do what I can. But okay, I'll okay. we'll do <laughs> it. It's, it's got to be natural. You're right. We can't have this scripted. So, Sophia, what were you going to oh, say? Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, what pun were you going to I Oh, no, this is embarrassing oh. now because I didn't even have a good pun. But oh. I, I just, what you said about discipleship just reminded me of just people just being themselves. We've had a lot of like dating coaches and life coaches come on that talk about how you should just, I mean, be open to dating, obviously, but be living your life and just trying to be a better person or a better uncle or better friend better roommate and i think like you're you're saying being a disciple could be being a good mentor to the youth in your life to the kids to the like girls that you do like that you go to work with like stuff like that that just makes you such a better person to Mm -hmm. date in the first place and i think some people are just so focused on being a good like potential boyfriend that it just is like well you're not a very good cousin like it's kind (laughs) of obvious like when you hang out with your family so i just i don't know i think discipleship fits in that too just being a good disciple makes you such a better person all around yeah. see how so smart much. she is well, that wasn't oh, funny though there was no pun there. What, <laughs> i know i'm sorry what was that all of religious <laughs> stuff so, all about we wanted something so funny much, <laughs> so much of what people emphasize like i've heard so many people based off of, like their descriptions of like all the stuff that they're like the character development that are doing a lot of people's lives are so fixated on marriage that everything in their life is spousal prep and that's oh, not yes. a terrible thing but it's like, you're not guaranteed that you're going to get married. That is a statistical reality. And I'm not trying to, you know, <laughs> just be the bearer of bad news, but like not everybody does as much as people may want to. So like you should develop other skills that aren't an right. MRS degree or right. an MR degree, you know? Yeah. Are you sure you don't live in Utah? Yeah, yeah that's a tough reality for a lot of people here. We, we, we thought the MRS degree was actually coined here. Are yeah. you telling me that we didn't invent that? I know. I was surprised God, to hear I, that. I was I like, did you know that, what that was? I yeah. thought we had that copyrighted. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. That's great. Is Ring by Spring a thing out there? Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes. You speak in okay, our yeah, language. Yeah. You, you speak Mormon yeah, yeah. fluently. Yes. Huh? That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, it's really good to hear that that's not just here. That is so, refreshing. We, we get this idea, maybe it's like you too, is you get it's like just centered around you. But mm-hmm. to hear that's uh, more nationwide, it makes me yeah. feel a little bit better. It's good so. to hear other people are suffering. That's so good. In, your survey, <laughs> in your survey, you said the word toxic came up. How, how are they describing it? What kinds of things do you remember that people saying about dating that were making it so toxic for them? A lot of overcomplicated or over spiritualized sayings and pressures so like we talked about earlier like the god told me um we should break up or we should get married um people using the expression that i don't have peace about this which can be very valid like all, all these things right. are like they have some form of validity but then uh, like when you boil it down sometimes you get to like hear people behind closed doors you get to hear a little bit more um people talked about how they, they felt as though uh the culture at large is trying to 
make them but it, they felt as though they were a little bit behind if they didn't leave college with an engagement ring um and so it's a lot of those pressures where it's just like i feel a heavy weight and an expectation on me to get something done that is largely out of my control right and it, it, like that, that that was what i gathered that they meant and then some people it was just like random first date stories that were like like what this one girl is like i went on a date with an rotc guy and within four minutes the guy said so do you see yourself becoming a military wife and she said <laughs> i don't know and he got up and left uh, and, it was and like, you, you know we have an rotc uh, young woman sitting here <laughs> who's, oh, really? who's in the air yeah. force so <laughs> that was awesome no it's, <laughs> it's familiar yep that's you awesome know, some <laughs> of the some of the things i've heard landon in terms of making it toxic uh, are things like ghosting and mm. where you'll go out on a first date and then, you know, you'll really have a good time and then never hear anything from the guy yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Or that he's dating you and five other girls at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a we have a phrase here called the Nickmo. I don't know if you know what that is. That's a uh, uh, non non exclusive com non committal arrangement or something like that. Non committal make out. Make out. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> non-committal makeout is the nickmo and we have that's a saying here but so you're telling me uh, that is you yeah, yeah, we yeah, finally we, got we something got that we own here <laughs> let's jump I on that thing it, copyright not, not over here oh, yeah okay. but you know that's that's another thing that makes it to toxic is um that they just want to get together and make out that's all they mm -hmm. want to do and so those are some of the things we hear sophia what are you hearing that's toxic yeah um I don't know. I like how you broke down the word toxic because I think it's a little bit overused as well. Like people use it differently because like things are annoying, but they're not necessarily toxic. I just personally don't like them. So <laughs> they I don't, don't know. They don't actually kill you. Yeah, or they don't actually. Yeah. <laughs> cause your hair to fall out. Or exactly. Something. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think all of the things that everyone is saying, it's pretty much covered it. I think a lot of it is just, and this is like with me too, the ghosting thing is hard personally because I have a hard time and a lot of girls have a hard time saying no to anything right just it's just in general it's hard and and so that's one that i can definitely see how it's it's hurtful like i think we bash on the boys a lot or you both do a lot oh, for the, the return that. missionary we guys do specifically that don't know how to talk, talk to girls but i think for girls it's hard too because we don't know we haven't really had that experience saying mm -hmm. no and communicating that besides right. just like no and like disappearing there's no like healthy communication yeah, I, of what i we're hear feeling. the boys say that a lot and i do think that's mm -hmm. one of the things that they think makes it so toxic is but, yeah but, but i think here we find that toxic is a word that people throw around what it really means is they're afraid yes mm -hmm. and, and and so we did uh, focus groups with uh, young men and the number one reason for not dating was fear of rejection and, and so mm. see that was the generational change you, you know back in my generation when everyone just still rode horses <laughs> uh, you were more afraid of not having a date on a friday or saturday night than and you being were turned down yeah, the, yeah. being turned down uh, being turned down was just an opportunity to ask somebody else <laughs> And so you pursued failure until you succeeded. Right. And so we have a generation for whatever reason, and I don't know if this is unique to our culture or not, who have a high degree of fear when it comes to developing relationships. We didn't have that before. There were problems before, you know, it wasn't perfect before. But if you're, I think what they're saying is in toxic, they're meaning this scares me. Right. I, I'm scared to ask someone out. I'm scared to go out and have a conversation because I feel vulnerable. Someone's going to judge me. Right. And, and if they misjudge me, that's going to damage my self-esteem. And, and so we've seen that r increase in low self-esteem. Every generation seems to be decreasing in that as we move forward. The, the suicide rate among uh, adolescents and teenagers is just continuing to increase because we have this problem in our country of low self-esteem. And so, you know, I think that's what's in, in impacting the dating culture is there's just so much fear. And, you know, and, and if they would just go out right. to dinner yes. and sit and have a conversation, right. it, and, and, it would all and, be solved. And so. so what you're saying, Tom, is the solution to this is just going out it's to just dinner. Just going out to dinner. Well, that's so. amazing. We should, <laughs> it's just dinner. So we, we should have a podcast so land, about land that. Landon, oh. you're be, you feel free to use that. Anytime yeah, you use that anywhere. You, you can use Nickmo, and you can use it's just dinner, and there's it, it's copyright free. We're not going to charge you anything. You can put it in your book. You can do whatever you want with it. I, yeah, if you put I, it in I this book, it. I'd like him to. 
give us a byline or well, something. Well, yeah, you know, I'll, give you, I'll give you a shout out. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. decide. <laughs> a shout you out do. there. That's what we need. <laughs> okay, but so I, I we, talk, I, we've talked about a lot of the negative. What did you find out some of the solutions are going to be with this? One communication, and we somebody y'all kind of hit the nail on the head there. It's a lot of communication is needed, and that's a that's not just dating. That is oh, all yeah, relationships. Yeah. Oh, and so yeah. the more that I, the, the older that I'm getting, the more I'm like, oh wow, like when I said this in the book, I didn't realize like just how like true it is that like the better at communicating I am, like this this past week actually, I I made the assumption that I was allowed to bring some students for the ministry that I work for who are not yet graduated to a young adults event, even though they're graduating like two weeks later. Had I communicated that, I would have like saved a bunch of people, a bunch of awkward <laughs> conversations that had to turn down other kids from it. And it was just like, it was my error entirely because I just didn't communicate. And the right. times that I've asked for clarity on things, the times that I've communicated like, hey, this is where I'm going to be, or I'm on the way, or like, how do you feel about this? And this is how I feel about this. I have not had to play around with all this mystery. And if people mm. just legitimately say what they actually mean and express themselves and are honest with people and go, try honest. to clearly communicate, mm. it it does wonders. And, yeah, and it, I I encourage people to be honest when somebody like like there's been people that'll like turn down somebody and they'll be like, I'm just not like into you or whatever. I encourage people to be honest about what that yes. is. Mm. I do want them to be diplomatic. I don't if like if it's just like you know, I'm not physically attracted to you. Like, I, I'm I'm not opposed to people saying that. I don't need them to go list by list, bullet point by bullet point. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't right. like your hair yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but like, like I, I got a buddy who uh, went on a date with a girl a couple years ago, and she told him that I just don't have peace about this, and that was the reason that they didn't go on like a second or third date. Mm -hmm. But then I hung out with her, and she was a driving and she told me like oh no he was just really weird and it was like, <laughs> well, like mm -hmm. and he would have liked to have known that because yeah. he probably is doing some of the exact same stuff on his next on day his next day. yeah yeah and he'd you come up with some new jokes <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> okay but how do you say that is my question what do i send him a text you're weird like no, obviously not like that but that's where i get lost is... so let's define that weird yeah uh, another way that you can say that is you know i felt kind of uncomfortable in our our conversation yeah you know weird yeah, is kind of a you know i that's hurtful, I, I, yeah. I just didn't feel that we connected okay yeah, you, you know there's ways honest. that you can say that rather than saying you're weird okay yeah, we didn't have yeah. a lot in common I, yeah yeah that's a, another way you can like, say that it's it is complicated trying to actually like get into the like okay don't just say the vague statement but then do you say something very specific like yeah. you, you don't want to be hurtful too specific yeah to anybody yeah, yeah so like exactly. I, I i kind of agree with the the uncomfortable thing or like like honestly sometimes it can be specific like if it like yeah. um like some people will just do something that is incredibly odd and it might be worthwhile right. I, I am all for <laughs> when like this is something that i did get a little pushback on and it's just people who kind of assumed that i was not nuanced and that i like if you do not physically feel safe breaking up with somebody in person right. don't yeah. like you you could text them you could call them you could do whatever yes. that makes you feel safe right. and this so is some one person thought that i when i made the general general statement of like you should probably break up with somebody in person it's just a respect thing they thought i meant like even in those abusive situations i did yeah. not but no, I, um yeah. no. But like, but, mo but most of the time, it's not going to be like that, right? And you yeah. should you should care enough, especially really if you've been dating for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. You should yeah, care enough yeah. to sit down with the person. Well, they, and let's just be honest. There's no good way of breaking up. There is not someone. It's yeah. not like I would can... just say God told me that we yeah. could. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only you know. Blame it on God. That's you know. <laughs> and we come yeah, we come like, full circle, right? Like, Maybe we need a tagline. It's just dinner. Blame it all on God. Yeah, you know, I'm not <laughs> sure I want to go there. <laughs> but there's a lot of people that will like do something incredible. Like, uh, like I remember one of the surveys said something about like the guy took me. His idea of a first date was we went to the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you could you could specifically say, hey, um, yeah, I don't want to go on another date with you. You took me to the Walmart, to the Walmart parking, Walmart parking lot, lot as your idea of a first well, date. Like that's well. like a specific enough thing that's like, yeah, you should just know better. And yeah. that's partially why I think that especially with guys, this tends to be a, more of a guy issue, like they're oblivious to what's wrong on a date. I think it's important for guys to communicate what happens on a date. Like, 
this is very stereotypical so i'm not trying to be stereotypical but like the girls in my experience have been like tell me all the details and they'd be like right we went to this place he opened the door like whatever yeah. and so like they get like kind of that debrief of like what was weird what wasn't guys it's like no it was a good time yeah, it was That's fine. It. Everything like, was good. Yeah. Was great. She's yeah, really into me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, but the other you thing, actually... the other thing I would say on first dates is that the, the young woman should say, where are we going? Mm. What are we going to do? Right. And that's a very honest conversation mm. as well. And that way she knows what's coming up. But because if and you that's... don't do that, you become a guest on our show of worst first dates. <laughs> worst first dates, or you end up in a Walmart park. <laughs> yes, you. We haven't had, and we need the Walmart parking. We need that or, person on our or show. Or, Bob, you end up at a pet's funeral. Yes, you end, <laughs> you end up with the family <laughs> burying their frozen dog, you know. Oh, That's a long a story, thing. Landon. We'll have to share that with you some other time. I haven't even heard that. That's oh, terrifying. you got to listen to the back episodes. <laughs> yeah. we, we've got know, a long history of, one of our favorite things to do is episodes on bad dating stories that we are, are listening to. make a collection. Yeah. Yes, it's it's great fun to make fun of other people, and honestly, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> but, it but like, the, I, I think that's kind of what you're saying with like the girl could ask. I thought like one thing that's kind of humble brag here. I when I go on dates, like if I know that I'm taking somebody to maybe do something that's like fun uh, or like like kind of sporty, like even if it's like putt putt, communicating like either telling them if I wanted to be a surprise, just give me like a general like, hey, like I was thinking like maybe there's like a little bit of movement. And this thing like probably not the best yeah. to wear like a really nice dress you right, know like just right. communicating like different things like that and mm -hmm. giving them enough giving them enough details so that if something is not aligned with that they know that like something's off so like telling them it's like especially if you're like you're it's somebody that you've never met with like being like hey my plan is to meet you here at this place uh like let's say red robin or something like that and that's mm -hmm. my intention of where to go and so this way her friends can know if she, like Whoa, this was true. supposed to be the place she was at yeah because right. like if you just look out for their safety and their well-being and look out for them having the best possible time chances are they probably will feel like they're safe right. and feel like they're having a good time and so yeah. it's just an extra layer of communication that benefits everybody yeah really good point we talk about safety a lot right. and help wanting our young women to be safe mm-hmm Mm -hmm. And we notice, <laughs> I just, I, I wish there was like, cause we talk about negative feedback a lot. And that's something that like, obviously when you on right is like telling what didn't go right. But something that a lot of the coaches talk about too, is they ask like when they have that, when they're usually working with the two people that go on the date is they'll have them say like, what could be better, but then what went well. And sometimes I think when I have had to write those awkward texts or like have those awkward conversations that are like, yeah, we just didn't work out. Like, I really wish that I had been like, but you made me feel really safe. Like you, right. you were very sweet and like, cause Good usually point. I'm like, you're really nice, but that's like super <sighs> blech. Like, I feel like right. that's just kind of fluffy. It's not but... you, it's me. No, it's not yeah. you, it's yeah, me. No, I, yeah, no, Sophie, I think that is a really good thing. I don't, I think that a, a young man or a young woman needs to know something that they did well, mm -hmm. that you did make me feel safe. And I really appreciate that. And I think that's something a young man could really build on. Mm -hmm. and, and especially but, but if he was polite. But we just didn't seem and, to have a lot in common. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so, yeah, that's a good way to kind of make someone feel good without destroying their self-esteem. Seeing mm -hmm. that that was the number one fear of the male population mm -hmm. was fear of rejection. You, you know, don't uh, play into that and play upon their fears, because then what they do is they just stop dating. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the worst things that we see in our society is when people stop dating, th they don't develop relationships with the opposite sex, which is essential to move on with their lives. And a lot of times then they spend their nights uh, on the computer and they get into pornography and then they get a, a warped sense of what relationships are supposed to be like. And so that's what we want to avoid by having people go out to dinner right. is that that's a positive activity that you can engage in that is uplifting and beneficial. The worst thing that can possibly happen is that you eat some good food and make a friend. Right. There's so yeah. many other things that could be worse that you could do on a Friday or Saturday night. Right. It's always better. Yeah. It's always better to eat with someone than eat alone. Yes, and right. we all got to eat. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm supposed to go on a date like next week, I think, and like I've never met the person. I met him through a dating app, and it's just like, okay, like I I have no idea if this person. That that's right. that's another thing that's like a big emphasis is a lot of people feel as though they have, they have to figure out if this person is going to be their future spouse and before right. they <laughs> yeah. that oh is my the point goodness. of the date oh my goodness <laughs> you're, 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 you're leaning right into one of our biggest pet peeves yeah. 
it, it, because the, the, the society reacts, you know, that when they come back from the first date, the roommates say, well, how was it? Yeah. Is he the one? Is he the one? You, you know, and, and, and family members call, mom calls, well, honey, how was the date? How did things go? You know, how, because that the pressure comes, you haven't even got to know them yet, and all your roommates are already picking out the colors for your reception and right. deciding who's going to be the maid of honor. And the pressure that puts on a first date, it's not just a first date. It's essentially a proposal for marriage right. when you ask a girl out the first time in, in aspects of our culture. Well, and we've seen this happen where they're on an online app looking for someone to go to dinner with. They're shopping for a husband yeah. or a wife. Yeah. It's and a mindset it's, problem. Yeah, I think that's one of the things Landon was saying and, is that this girl he's going out with next week, he's going right. to marry. He's going to marry her. And but Sophie's yeah, going to yeah. change that. <laughs> Sophie, you're going to change that mindset, aren't you? That, can Absolutely. You, can we make that your assignment? Too? Yes, I'll okay. get right on that. Thank you. All right, Bob. So I want you to know this. After everything we've just talked about. Yes. Okay. Landon makes a post on Instagram that says something like this. All right, I apologize. I recant everything that I said in the book. None of it's true. All right, Landon, what's up with that post? <laughs> uh, the date was uh, 4-1-23. It was April Fool's Day. That's and what I uh, thought. Oh, so. no. Because <laughs> okay. all the comments so were like, me. wait, wait, you you really, oh, you got me. Okay. Uh. <laughs> I was I like, one thing, there's a lot of comparisons. So like, I read a lot of dating books and like marriage books and research for this. And one of the ones I had to read was uh, I Kiss Dating Goodbye by Joshua Harris. And I'm constantly worried about the comparisons because like we're both like in our early 20s when, when we wrote a, wrote a book about dating, uh, both, you know, devilishly handsome, uh, <laughs> balding uh, slightly, you know, like all this stuff. And I was like, oh gosh, these like comparisons are going to kill me. And then he... <laughs> He recanted everything from his book, and I was like, "Oh, if I make this April Fool's Day joke, are people gonna think that I'm like this? Is, this is gonna be like the final uh, little like bingo slot, <laughs> like me fully being Joshua Harris." Um, but a lot, like honestly, if people read his book and just know that most of it is like stuff that he was like, "Yeah, I don't agree with this at all," just do the exact opposite of most <laughs> of the things in that book, and you'll be fine. <laughs> That's great. Well, I you had me for like a minute there. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> What's he talking about? So, that is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah. this has been this has around. been great. Wow, you are so fun. This has just been so funny yeah. and great. And man, such great Thank advice. Uh, again, I just everything he says is dead on, you guys. And I think that we can learn something from this. I think he's right. Communication is a big part of this. So, Landon, tell everyone where they can find your book, because I, I think everyone listening to us should go get it and read it, because I just think it's really going to help them and help the dating situation. So where can they find it? I appreciate that. Um, my book is available on Amazon in ebook and paperback formats. Uh, it is Detox Christian Dating, an Examination and Detoxification of Christian Dating Culture. Mm-hmm. So, so just to refute the April Fool's thing, everything in the book is true. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. That's good. I, I, we got that I, straight. My father has been big on, like, a, like my dad, probably like a year after I released it, finally bought it and read it. <laughs> and, he was, and he was like, I'm wondering how much of this stuff in 10 years' time you will still agree with. And I think that there's some things that I've, like, become a little bit more nuanced on. Um, but I don't really think that there's anything that I've necessarily like totally flipped on. Uh, right. There's might some slight alterations, but I, I am curious about like, well, let, let's hope time. that the things you and, and us talk about that mm -hmm. we're going to fix it all. And then you won't have the same problems right. in your book that you had to deal with. And, so. and we're both way older than your dad. <laughs> and, and so, you know, we, we've been, I've been married for 44 years. And so, you know, it's not that uh, those things were not that way when I was in the dating age, things have changed. So we're going to fix it. And, well, the only As way we, we can forward. fix it is just one way. What is it, Sophie? It's just dinner. It's just there, dinner. there we go. go. There Good you go. All right. <laughs> and so, Landon, where can we find? Where can everybody find you on social media as well? Landon Swain writes L A N D E N. My mother's was fancy and put me with an E instead of an O. Landon Swain writes on TikTok and Instagram, and then it's L Swain writes on Twitter, but 
my Twitter is just pointless. It's mainly me tweeting about the Milwaukee Bucks, so <laughs> don't even mind it. Well, pro- not a lot to say on that, unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah. if if you're I, listening, I go check out <laughs> go check out the description of this episode, and I will add Landon's link tree on there, and you can find all of his. That is so stuff kind on. of you to do yeah, that. It, I am a kind. You are. You are. Yeah. Tom is a, Isn't he I a good really guy? Am. I mean, good heavens. Who does that for other people? So, well, Landon, thank you so much for taking your time to spend with us. It's just been wonderful and fascinating. Yeah, thank you all so much for having me. This I, I love talking about this. So, like, thank you all so much for the opportunity to talk about it. Great. Glad you were yeah, here. It's been great. So you can, guys can also check us out on Instagram. And I do think that, that Sophia is going to put a couple of things about Landon up there to kind of wow. pre- prepare everybody for this episode. So, wow. Landon, you're going to appear on our Instagram and you can mm-hmm. find it at the it's just dinner podcast on Instagram. And that's also, you can find us on TikTok. Mm-hmm. and you know, Bob, we're getting those funny date stories every once in a while. We yes. get them in and they send them to the, it's just dinner podcast at Gmail. Oh, good. So keep sending them. Cause we're ready. We're about, we're about due for about another, due for another one. bad so, dates episode. Well, thank you everybody well, for listening. Listen. Thank yeah. you, Landon. Yeah, we really appreciate you. And be sure to listen to us. We put up a new episode every Friday. And so that you guys uh, check out what we're doing on the It's Just Dinner podcast. Mm-hmm. How about that? That's, it's, it's definitive. It's, I only it's have not one, April Fool's. I only it's have one true. more thing to say. What is it? Hey, you guys, just go have fun out there, will you? <laughs>